Today, I'm going to show you how I turned this pile of sticks into a strong wooden A-frame swing set. Along the way, you'll see feats of strength and stupidity. Backwards. I'll show you the mistakes that I made and answer the question, how does this guy get the beam up there by himself? In the end, you'll see how I built this swing set that's strong enough to even hold me. Additional details and materials used will be included in the description below. Let's get into it. To build the A-frames, we need to start by making the legs and I based a design on an equilateral triangle for maximum stability. So I grabbed some scrap wood to make a template. Using a speed square, I mark a line of 30 degrees on one side and 60 degrees on the other. Then I cut my template out at the miter saw. And while at the saw, I also nipped off any pointy edges. Here is the final template. Next, I lay out and line up four pressure treated four by four by tens. And then using a large rafter square, I mark a line across the beams to make certain they are all the same length. Then I trace my template to mark my cuts. Once marked up, I set up for cutting and put on some protective gear. I start by cutting the 30s, which I do one, two, three, four times. Next are the straight cuts. And then with a little maneuvering, I cut the 60 degree cuts. Now the miter saw isn't quite long enough, so I had to do a test cut to line it up. And even after the test cut, I couldn't cut all the way through the wood, so after completing the rest of my cuts, I used a circular saw to finish the cuts that the miter saw couldn't manage. And after all this cutting, I was real happy to gear down. Oh, wow, that's hot. Once I have all my legs cut out, I lay out a pair on the garage floor. I used a scrap piece of four x four as a spacer to represent the beam. And then I used my four x six beam to represent the ground to keep everything lined up and in place. Now for the top cross piece. I'm going to be doing a half lap joint that will look like this. I lined up a section of 4x4 on the top and used a pencil to mark off all my cut lines on both the cross piece and the legs. After it was all marked up, I grabbed my jaw horse and set it up. Then I placed my cross piece into the jaw horse's vice like clamp to secure it. Once secured, I marked the line halfway down the wood and then lined up my circular saw blade with the mark. I cut my marked lines out carefully. And after cutting my marks, I made successive passes with the circular saw in between those first cuts. Now, if this is more involved than you want to do, you can skip this idea and use two by material attached to the legs with lag screws, lag bolts, or carriage bolts instead. After I finish the first side, I repeat the process on the other side. Once you have nothing but wood slivers, you can begin knocking them out with a hammer. I prefer using the blunt face side, but you can use the claw if you want. Whoops. Thankfully, that's not a big deal. I didn't actually need that piece. And once all the big bits are gone, you can get to work chiseling it down until fairly smooth. Most of the chiseling can be done by hand, but you may need to hammer any stubborn bits. Once the cross piece is done, then I did the same on each of the legs. Sawing out my marks, making multiple passes, hammering, and finally chiseling. And after I finished all my laps, I cut off the excess on the cross piece. And then I proceeded to do a dry fit. So I just repeated the process for the other A-frame by marking, cutting, hammering, and chiseling until all the half laps on the cross piece and the legs were finished. I was excited to dry fit these together before I even cut off the excess and everything was coming along beautifully. After grabbing some waterproof glue, I apply it to the half laps I cut into the two legs. Once they are good and coated, I put the cross piece in and drive in three two and seven eighth inch lag screws on each side. After I trim up my other A-frame cross piece, I glued and then screwed it together just like the first one. Then I measure 24 inches down from the top cross piece and mark it. I lay a four by four on top, line it up, and mark it off as if I'm doing a half lap joint. But this time I'm not actually gonna do it my original plan was to do half lap joints on all cross members, but I'm afraid it will weaken the legs too much if I remove half the wood in the middle of the legs. Instead, I'll leave the legs alone and only remove material from the horizontal 4x4s. If you're a pro, let me know if I made the right call in the comments below. So after making all my marks, I secure my second cross piece in the jaw horse and I cut, hammer, and chisel. Then I cut off any excess and line it up with my marks to secure it to the legs using three deck screws per side. After doing both A-frames, I move them out of the way, and let's turn our attention to the beam. So this is a 4 by 6 by 12, and it is huge. So I measured and marked off my holes for both my swing hardware and a 2.5 inch overhang on each side. 
Then I used a small handheld drill guide to keep my hole straight. I also had to use a drill bit holder and a hex ended half inch drill bit to be able to drill all the way through the wood, the wood beam. And after drilling the four holes I needed for my two swings, I flipped the beam over and installed the hardware. I put in four hooks, two for each swing. Then I slid on a washer and a bolt onto each one, tightened it with a wrench to snug them up, and added a second nut to keep it from ever coming loose. Once I had all my hooks installed, I wanted to mark guidelines for assembly. I will use these lines as a guide to align the legs with the beam. I marked a straight line around the beam where it would meet the legs, and then I marked another five degree line that was slanted out from the middle of the swing set. Then I put the beam to the side, and I called it a day to let the A-frames dry overnight. The next morning, I laid out my A-frames and measured and marked up four feet from the bottom for another cross piece. Then I lined up my 4x4 and did a quick check to make sure it was parallel to the other cross piece. Once satisfied it was aligned, I just marked it all off. But I'm not going to cut or attach it yet, as I have to put the swing set together by myself and I don't want to add more weight. So I put the first A-frame to the side and I quickly measure, line up, and mark off the other A-frame cross piece. Now it is time for assembly, so I grab my first A-frame and bring it out to the construction area by the garden fence. Then the next one, and now the monstrous beam, and most importantly, my jaw horse. And here's why. By using the jaw horse, I can have the jaw horse hold the A-frame in place while I align the beam on top. Next, I bring a ladder into the mix, and I lift up the beam and place it on top of the ladder. The jaw horse made maneuvering everything much easier for a single person. Then I grab my A-frame and put the beam on the bottom of the two braces. As carefully as possible, I climb the ladder and put the beam into place. Now I was really uncomfortable doing this, and this is probably not the safest way to get the job done. So if possible, get a helper if you can instead. So I line it all up and begin driving three four and a half inch lag screws per side. And then, as I was constructing the swing set, something seemed off. Crap. I have it backwards. That's right, this dummy put it together backwards. The cross piece are supposed to be on the inside of the swing set. I'll explain why later. For now, let's get this thing apart. So I begrudgingly took that side down and put it together the right way after many choice words. And this time I clamped it, because when I was driving the screw the first time, there was some slight movement of the beam. I drove my screws in on both sides. As a reminder, these are four and a half inch lag screws. Then I dropped down the other side, realigned it. And after some fussing, everything falls into place. And once it's aligned, I clamp it. Then I drive my screws. And now that I have a basic structure, I just have to solve one other issue racking. Look at how it moves side to side. To solve this, I'm going to have to add angle braces, otherwise known as gussets. So I attach a scrap piece of wood to the beam to make a template, and then I mark it off on the beam side, and then using a square, I make another mark in line with the bottom cross brace. Back at my garage, I mark out a 90 degree notch and inch in using my square. Then I cut out the notch with a jigsaw, and cut off the angled beam side with my miter saw. Once trimmed up, I test it out, and it's perfect. So I trace my pattern onto a 4x4, two times, once per A-frame. Then I cut my two 4x4 pieces apart, and I had to trace my pattern onto the other side of the 4x4. I used my circular saw to cut out the notch side first. Now this is not the ideal tool for this, I wish I had a band saw. And once I cut from one side, I had to flip it over and cut from the other side. And once I did all as much as I could with the circular saw, I had to clean it up with a multi-tool. Because of the circular saw's shape, I had to cut through the deepest parts to complete the notch. And even after I got the notch done, there was a lot of cleaning up to do. By using a speed square as a guide, I used the multi-tool to clean it up until the notch was a perfect 90 degree angle. Since my notches may not have been as precise as marked, I had to recheck the gussets and make any necessary adjustments. Then once the adjustments were made, I attached the gussets to the swing set using three four and a half inch lag screws at the top. And since I was running low on lag screws, I used one lag screw on the bottom and then angled in deck screws later on either side of the gusset. Then I asked the boss if this was an okay placement for the swing set. 
and the boss said no and told me where to stick it. So I had to move this monstrosity, so I stuck some plywood under the legs, and then this comedy routine ensued. Until eventually I got it to where the boss told me to put it. Are we good, boss? Great, now we can anchor and level. So I grabbed some spray paint to mark around the legs. And once all the legs are marked, I twist the swing set out of the way. Then I stake the area outside the marks and run a level line. Once my line is level all the way around, I take measurements to determine how far each hole needs to be dug to make the whole swing set level. With measurements in hand, I dig holes one foot down for each of the legs. For my install, I'm using gravel rather than concrete to anchor the legs. So I backfill my holes with gravel while occasionally tamping and measuring the height of each hole for levelness. Once all the holes are dug and backfilled, I add swing set anchors to the outside of each hole as an additional safety measure. Then I simply slide my swing set into position and double check for level. It's not perfect, but close enough. So I backfilled my holes the rest of the way with gravel and then attach my swing set anchors to each of the legs. And then I assemble and hang each of the swings. Before I install those last two side braces, I ain't gotta try this out. And after my kids told me to get back to work, I checked the last two four x fours for the horizontal braces against the frame and they were slightly off after all that moving and installing of the swing set. So I just remarked them, then I cut them to half depth, just like the previous side braces above them and removed the excess, preset some screws, and then I installed them. Now there are some mistakes I have to confess before this video ends. The first one that you already saw was putting the frames up backwards. Now the reason this was a mistake is because if those braces were on the outside, all those racking forces would be concentrated on the screws and may weaken their hold over time. But if those braces are on the inside, then when the swing set moves, it will push the wood brace into the legs and not exert as much force on the screws. And that's why I had to switch those A-frames around. The second was a gap between the top of the leg and the beam. I'm not even sure how I managed that, but I solved it easily by cutting a wedge on my miter saw and then screwing that in and trimming off the excess with my multi-tool. And then there was the errant cut I made on the top of one of the legs. My solution was to put this cut in the back of the swing where nobody will ever know. Shh. Don't tell anyone. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with the way everything else came out. So now you have a choice. You can either check out one of my other videos, or you can watch an overweight, balding, middle-aged guy swing around like a kid. Choose wisely.